All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. My name's Virginia Minch. I am the uh, co-lead from the High Country uh, Tableau User Group located just outside of Boone, North Carolina, and I work for Appalachian State University. And I'm very excited to be part of this. Um, I think this is the third virtual Carolinas tug meeting, and we're excited to have you all with us today. So just a couple of things before we get started. Yay, App State. Um, we are going to have a shared folder for any materials that we're able to share with you after today's meeting, and we'll go ahead and put that link in the chat as well as share it with our follow-up email. Um, we are going to have some speakers uh, from various tugs around the Carolinas. So first we're going to have Brad Earl from UNC, sorry, not UNC Greensboro, from Greensboro, from the Piedmont Triad tug. And then we have a couple people from our Charlotte tug, Darrell Pate and Jeremy Poole. So um, I'm going to introduce Brad first as he is our first speaker. So Brad has uh, been using Tableau since version 1.5. I think that probably uh, makes him the longest Tableau user in the room. Uh, he also runs his own consulting practice for Tableau, among other things. He has previously worked for Cisco, Wells Fargo, Fannie Mae, and is currently working for Freddie Mac. And he was the 2019 Tableau Virtual Hackathon winner. So round of applause for our first speaker. Hey, thanks a lot, Johnny. Let me share my screen. Let's see if we can get this uh, get this started here. Everybody see that? Okay, little thumbs up. Yes, button. looks good. Wonderful. Get this out of the way. So, what uh, what I have is a challenge, which is uh, multi hide is what I refer to it as. And it's, it's, I haven't hacked for a while. Um, what you end up with is hacking was really prevalent back in version five, six, eight, et cetera. And basically you can find things that you couldn't do through the user interface. That is the, the desktop application. So what folks would do is they would go in into the PWB file, which is actually just an XML file, and uh, play around, basically make some changes, see if Tableau would choke on it. And uh, if it did, then no harm, no foul, pretty much. So I want to put this disclaimer out there to begin with, is I'm going to show you something which is a hack. That is, you go into the PWB file, and you make modifications that you cannot do through the front end at this point in time. Uh, it works for anything version 2019.2, which is when the show hide button was originally uh, set up all the way through to the current version that I've done 2021.4. Uh, folks like uh, the a bunch which the, that we used to have out there were um, you know, Jonathan Drummond used to hack. You had uh, Joe Mako used to hack. Uh, you had a, uh, another gentleman, his name escapes me at the moment, and I'll get to that pretty soon because I can't forget him. He was the Darth Vader of hacks and worked with Tableau. Uh, so most of you probably remember him. But I don't want to go too on too long. Let's go look at what you need. Uh, the tools that you need in order to, to uh, do this hack is simply Tableau Desktop or the Tableau Public App, and then a, some sort of a text editor. Uh, I prefer Notepad++, and I'll show you how that works. Uh, basically, in the setup of Notepad++, what I do is I go out there and I change in the XML from the style configurator, setting style configurator, go into XML, and you put in your user extension, PWB. And the reason why you do that is then you get the XML enhancements, the uh, ability to collapse, et cetera, sections in, in their entirety. As you know, XML is a structured language, and it starts with a tag, which is bracketed with greater than and less than symbols, 
and it ends with a tag that's also bracketed, but it's right after that uh, less than symbol, there is a backslash. So uh, let's go in and, and see what we're going to what we're going to go about and do. So th this is the effect of what the end result is looks like. Just to get you all excited. So what I have here is I've got things like a floater, and I I've got a uh, another floating. This one's a container. This one's an object. This one's a another object, and this one here is a, it is actually a fixed or tiled container sitting in there. And this one show hide button uh, actually ends up showing and hiding all things once. So it's a toggle on, toggle off type of routine. Um, from the setup, one of the things that I did when I created this is I came out to the layout section. And I want to focus on that a little bit because that's this is the second piece of the trick, if you will, is that not only do I have the, the, um, the elements sitting out there, but I need to be able to find these elements very quickly. So I added four X's at the end of it. I, you can use whatever you want, but I use four X's because four X's don't otherwise show up in, uh, in the use of a TWB. So each of the containers that I was looking at um, are basically uh, have a, a rename, you can rename a dashboard item. And in the renaming, that should have shown, it has the four X's. So even though it doesn't show here because it kind of drops out for some odd reason, the four X's are there recognizing those are the things that I want to show and hide. Uh, and so I figured that out to begin with. The next step that I did was I jumped out into the uh, PWB, and this is a so this is opened in Notepad plus plus, and you'll see how they have these nice little collapsing routines. We have preferences, and I can drop all the data sources out because we know it's not in there, and we know it's not in worksheets. It's in the dashboards, so that quickly gets a lot of 1,700 rows out of the way, and then I can go out and do a a search for my XXX. And when I'm doing this, I'm going through and I'm picking up these IDs. This is ID number 63. That's the important piece. It's a zone and it's an ID. So you see the zone starts with, a, with this and ends with a slash at the end. So that zone is 63. Another one that I have out here is 44. Another one out here that I have is 45. And 66. So I have to remember all those. Those are the four zones that I want to show and hide. And then I end up with this guy's, that's just a font color, so I don't need that. This guy is a zone, and it says that's the tile text, that's 63, so I need that guy. And again, that's, a, that's wherever, and I'm going. That's 46. Am I going in a loop? I'm looking for the one thing that I, which is my action button. There we go. So <clears throat> here's the show hide control. This zone is actually the show hide control. So that's the other piece that I was looking for. So after I collect all that, within the XML, it actually has this button action routine. And here's the trick. See where it says zone IDs are 45? Well, that zone ID 46 only affects this zone ID 45. So simply what I do, and I've cheated a little bit here, is I take those four that I, that I had and I come out here and paste in instead the IDs that I came up with save that and then open it back up, it should uh, end up with then working with all four uh, and as the uh, routine. And that's that's the trick. That's pretty pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, it's a whole lot of effort for, for what seems like a kind of a, a letdown as to how easy it is. So 
So let's look, go through it. We create the objects, that's the orange, the green, orange, et cetera. We rename them with four X's. We saved it as a TWB. We opened it up, the TWB in Notepad++. We found the zone IDs. We added the additional zones to it. We saved it, tested, and then we could go back and rename the objects. And then I say, hey, give me some credit. I'm at bizwiz on, uh, in Twitter. That works out pretty well. Uh, I'm trying to share this on an attribute mode, uh, create a common license. And hey, don't make any money off of it without contacting me. That's the NC routine. So, so that, that's the, the trick. Now, one thing it doesn't do is it doesn't go out and actually do a show hide for multi buttons. Like I would like to see something where I could have, instead of uh, one button handling a bunch of stuff, I'd like to be able to have a multi-button. So I could add one button, two buttons, and three buttons into a show hide, determine which things they're going to show and which things they're not are going to hide uh, when, they're, when it's pressed, and then be able to select one or the other. To me, that would get rid of a lot of the parameter action activity that's currently going on where you end up setting up buttons and filters and it's a data filter, but it doesn't affect the filters, et cetera. Um, I think that it's a pretty good idea, idea. And if you think so as well, head on out there right now to communitytableau.com. It should be just about the latest idea that's out there called multi-object, multi-bullet button show hide. It has this information in it uh, and it will also have the posted the, the workbook here pretty soon, but go ahead and link on that one. Another idea that came up uh, that I, was a, one that was controlled by a parameter where you could have the entire show hide series of buttons uh, showing and hiding based on a parameter or a data element. And that's my presentation. Take it away. Thanks so much, Brad. Could you post those uh, links in the chat box so that we can go and vote on those? Uh, yeah, I sure can. That'd, That'd be great. great. I, um, I have to tell you, that is a hack I've been looking forward to seeing, and I plan to use it in multiple um, dashboards that I've created. So thank you for sharing that with us. Absolutely. Oh, I forgot to say, I'm, I didn't, I forgot to do one thing. I apologize. I've still got the screen. I don't have it anymore. It's out on, on a Tableau Public. So you can actually go out to Tableau Public, Public and see it as well. Fantastic. You can share your uh, Tableau Public link in the chat box as well. Okay, sure can. For that matter, anyone who has a Tableau Public page they'd like to share in the chat box, you know, you could get a lot of new followers today. All right. Well, next up we have Darrell. So Darrell has an MBA in data science and business analytics. He currently works for Wells Fargo in Charlotte, and he has more than nine years of experience in, in the financial industry, doing reporting and analytics. He uh, has experience in data modeling and architecture design, as well as big data, and has a passion for solving business problems as well. Um, Darrell. The one thing I forgot to ask you is how long have you been using Tableau? Thanks for the introduction. Yeah, I've been using Tableau for about seven years now. Um, so exciting to get to present. Um, awesome. So I'll just jump into it. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. The Tableau version. All right, perfect. So today, um, in the interest of starting with new tips, new tricks for 2022, um, I kind of took that into the presentation and I wanted to share a few tips um, that I've learned from looking through the last couple of versions of Tableau and trying to take out some of the things that I've learned. Um, so in today's session, we're gonna go through uh, two shortcuts that I've recently used, um, two workflow tips to kind of help your everyday Tableau developer, and then also two dashboard tips. So a different way of thinking about how you use your dashboards, how you structure some of your tables, and then um, how you actually use maps as well. Uh, the data sources that I'll be using are Superstore, as well as uh, data.charlotte, 
in c.gov, which has a lot of the public data for Charlotte. Um, so the first tip is actually a pretty simple one, but um, currently the version I'm using is 2021.4, and I believe this may be available in the older versions. Um, and this is just a uh, level of detail shortcut. Uh, so I'm going to start out with a region, and I'm going to drag that onto the view. Um, currently, it's showing as a map, so I want to change this to a table. And also, I want to drag on our sales. Now, uh, what typically happens is people want to go down to the state level as well. So I'm going to put that onto the view. Uh, the next thing that typically happens, okay, if you show this to your boss, they'll typically want to do concentrations. Um, what is the total uh, sales within a region? They want to see that in the view as well. And normally what we would do is create a fixed LOD. Um, but now uh, with this version of Tableau, we can take the sales, control click the sales, drag it onto region. And now this creates a new, um, a new calculation for us. And it's a fixed level of detail. So let me drag this onto the screen so you guys can see. Um, based off the region, give me the sum of sales. And this automatically creates that within the view. So basically um, for the state of Illinois is 24,000 and then all of the region, the central region is 147. And we can double check this by selecting all of the measures and seeing what the total is so we can get a total match. So this is something I thought was really cool and definitely helps out my workflow using Tableau day to day. All right, so the next feature that we're gonna go through is the copy and paste feature. And this one is specific to 2021.4. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with a floating text box. And I'm gonna take this text and make it a bit larger so you guys can see. And um, basically with this text, this works similar to a copy and paste in another tool, but it's something that can be used or leveraged on a lot of the different Tableau elements that are here. So what we can do with this is the copy the dashboard item. And then with a simple shortcut of control V, um, it actually pastes uh, another copy of this text. Now this seems very basic, but what this opens the possibility for um, is the copying of logos. If you're moving dashboard to dashboard, um, you can copy any containers that have the same formatting. So it's very powerful when you start to think about how many dashboards you've built, instead of duplicating your dashboard, you can actually just copy elements um, from dashboard to dashboard. It's really great for formatting principles as well. Um, this also works on containers. So I'm gonna drag in a vertical container and I'll change the background color to um, just this bright red. And then if we take this, copy the dashboard item and then control V, now we have two of the same. So if your business has a color palette that they like to use and you're refat reformatting someone else's dashboard, this really does come in handy in making sure everything looks consistent and you don't get off in either the text, the formatting or the, um, the font that you're currently using. Okay, um, the next tip, uh, we're gonna move into tooltip tooltip tool alignments. Um, this is something that I've started to use a little bit more and it's something that I found on Twitter. I thought that the group would benefit from. Uh, what I'm going to build is a state map. And within the state map, um, with anything that's geographic like this, we can drag a lot of measures in to the view as well as like different segments and dimensions. Um, if we want to, we want the user to be able to interact with the map but we also want them to see the actual data. So what I have here is um, I have all of the measures and the dimensions that I've pulled into the view, but sometimes when you inherit a dashboard from someone else or um, someone is using different tooltips and going into the tooltips and kind of changing um, the way that things are displaying. So instead of country, country and region, maybe someone just wants region. Uh, things can get a bit wonky in the way that it's currently laid out. So what I've done or what I discovered is by using the ruler at the top, if you highlight all of the information and then just move this out slightly, 
um, it aligns all of the values within your tooltip to make sure it's nice and clean. Uh, this is something that I haven't done before, but it's I found it very useful, especially if you have um, a naming convention that's very long and you want to fix everything in a quick and timely manner. Um, the next tip is actually going to be another way to do show and hide. Um, so this is really interesting. Um, there are a lot of different hacks out there for show and hide. I know some people have done things like using Figma and also, you know, containers that get bigger and get smaller. But in this newer version of Tableau, uh, I've found a way to do the show hide is actually built into the tool. So what I currently have is a uh, just a three prong dashboard. It has three columns here. So I have a line, which is sales over 2021. And I also have based off the superstore data sales for all my subcategories. So going into this view is pretty simple sales subcategory. And then I have a filter to the to the left. Um, what we can do with this filter, it's currently in a container. So we're going to double click on our filter, go to the more options, and then add a show hide button. So with this new functionality, it allows us to bring this new element that Tableau has created for us. We can make it slightly larger. And then when users are using this dashboard, um, they're able to click on this and actually hide uh, the filters that they have. So it's more of a, a user experience thing, especially if uh, you're limited in your real estate. It works really well. And one of the, the tips that I like to use with this, right now we can see if the user hovers over, we can see show vertical. Um, in this version of Tableau as well, uh, we can go into the vertical and actually rename that. So uh, we can rename this dashboard item, uh, you know, show filter. And now um, within our dashboard, when we hover over show, show filter, or we can name it filter. And this gives the user the ability to, um, you know, hide and show the filter, but also from a user experience perspective, um, gives them a nice little tool tip to understand what this, what this button means. Okay. Um, our last two uh, tips are more from a dashboard perspective. And I've started to see this a lot more. Um, the use of a dummy measure. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to start off with a simple um, min function. And I'm going to use a min of one. I'm going to put that in the column shelf. And then I'm going to make two more of these. This is really helpful because uh, Tableau recently has started to embrace uh, cross tab and tabular data. And with this, there's a lot of requirements to not only make things look like Excel, but also to kind of put things in a tabular view that may be at a different level of granularity, but also may have different formatting from column to column. This is something that Excel does. Um, so with this, uh, we're going to start out with taking the sales and creating um, sales within the first uh, marks pane. So I'm just going to drag sales onto um, label. And this will just give me the sum of sales here. Um, in order to see more of this, I'm going to drag subcategory onto our row so we can just see some differentiation. So for our first bucket, I'm just going to turn this to text. So we can see all of our text um, that we currently have here. Um, for our second one, uh, I'm going to drag in profit ratio. I'm going to put this on the color as well as the label. And I'm also going to change this to text as well. So what this is doing is um, essentially we have one column that has just the standard uh, sales. And then we have a conditional formatted uh, column here. So this is this could be is are the sales good or bad? Are the sales better than last year? And it doesn't affect the first column, which is really interesting. You don't have to uh, format the whole every column that's currently in the view. And then finally, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a pie chart. Um, so the way that we're going to do this is convert this to pie. We're going to drag segment onto angle segment onto color, and then sales. 
And then um, what we're doing here is we're getting a breakdown at a different level of detail. So while I have my total sales here, I have a breakdown of those sales in the same sheet and within the same um, dashboard, potentially, um, broken down by segment. So the total sales for accessories is 59,000. And then this is just a breakdown within the same view. And traditionally, when we would do something like this, we'd have to use a level of detail or a table calculation. So this is a potential workaround that you can use for this. Um, I've started to see this technique a lot more. There is a blog out here that is called um, Tables, uh, Better Tables by Lud Ludwig. And I'm gonna kind of show that a little bit later um, to see how he leverages that tool to make really beautiful spreadsheets. Um, for a final tip, uh, we have map layers. So currently I'm showing a map of Charlotte. Um, with the gold stop lines. This is a new light rail or rail that comes through the middle of Charlotte. And I have each of the points mapped. Um, I used to work with a lot of uh, geographic data, um, especially with hurricanes, um, tra uh, tracking and charting the pattern of a hurricane as it relates to the zip codes or um, a, a city that we may have a lot of residents in or a lot of loans. So this is really powerful to me. Um, with this data set, I currently have a shape file and these are points. And what I can do with this is without having any relationship between the shape files, I can go to a different data set, drag on the geographic uh, point, geometry point. Add this to the marks layer. And the current data set I'm, I'm connected to shows the population for a census block. So what we can do is we can drag on the unique identifier to basically break off these points. Think of these like almost like a zip code. We're gonna change the opacity to about 20%. And then every, every block or every census point is kind of the same. And what we can do with this data is we can use the different data points to show changes within the particular area. So I'm gonna use the uh, population. I'm gonna drag that onto color. And now we can start to get um, some detail about um, what areas are have a higher population than others. And if we're thinking about building a new rail or extending it, we can make sure that that rail goes to an area that has a very high population of people. This overlay is really cool because like I said, um, with the census plot, this doesn't have any relationship to the points. So essentially we've just laid this on geographically and Tableau has kind of made this quote unquote uh, additional layer. Um, where I think this could be really interesting is if you work with geographic data, and you have points from different um, data sets, specifically like a, a hurricane that maybe changes week over week. Um, this is a really great way to give people a visual of where the hurricane path is going, especially if you have an established location-based dashboard. Um, so yeah, that's the, that's the tips that we currently went through. Um, two shortcuts, two workflow tips, and two of the dashboard tips. Um, for the blog references, if you want to learn more about the spatial uh, map layers that I've just recently mentioned and the new changes within Tableau, definitely check out Mark Reed's um, Tableau profile. He has a blog that he's written about it. And Ludovic, um, he actually has uh, another tip of using better tables and also using the, um, the dummy measure um, in a really creative way to make um, a very nice spreadsheet view. So yeah, starting out 2022 with um, two tips of speech that you guys can use. Darrell, those are amazing. I think you'll uh, read through the chat box and see just how much everybody enjoyed that. I know that you told me some things I never knew and I've been using Tableau for a long time. So thank you. Thank you again for doing that. Yeah, no problem. Um, with this one, this is an example of actually the, the dummy measures. So how you can transform your tables it's really interesting.
That looks so that, great. I'll turn it over to you. All right. Well, thank you again. Um, like I said before, we're going to be creating a shared folder that we can put these materials in that we're allowed to share with you after the after the tug is over today. And I'll post that link in the chat in just a bit. So our next speaker is Jeremy Poole. So Jeremy is a senior principal, can, um, a senior principal, I guess, at Slalom in Charlotte, uh, which is a modern consulting firm for anyone like me who doesn't know what that is. Uh, he served as the co-lead for the Charlotte Tug since 2017. And within the Tableau community, he's known as the biscuit guy and can regularly be found engaging in database conversations on Twitter. Jeremy, would you like to take it away? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys so much. So thank you, uh, Brad. Thank you, Darrell. Uh, you guys took the hard part here. I have the distinct opportunity today to inspire rather than teach. Um, so I've, I've seen a lot of really awesome comments in the chat. Let's keep the engagement high. What I want to do is I want to challenge you here. I know we're at the end of January, so it's not really New Year's resolution season anymore. But I want to give you the opportunity to still make one based on something that may have inspired you today, right? Brad may have inspired you to dig deeper into things you thought were untouchable in Tableau. Um, Darrell maybe gave you some ease of use UI tips there. What I want to help you do is I want to help you understand what resources are available to you in the Tableau community to up your game this year. So when we meet together for Carolina's Tug 2023, I really would love to see some folks that are here today come back with some really awesome stories to tell about what they did to invest in themselves and their growth in the Tableau space in 2022. Um, so what I wanna share with you here, I wanna share some resources that are available to you. They'll cross a couple of different um, uh, spaces, uh, desktop focused, prep focused, different sorts of approaches you can take to building your skill set. whatever's most appropriate for you. And I hope that you'll uh, be able to leverage some of them and find yourself in a place you can be proud of this time next year. So let me go ahead and share screen just a second and I will uh, walk you through some of the amazing resources that you can take advantage of uh, as part of the community. All right, can everybody see okay? Yes, I can see. Awesome. So we've talked about new tips, new practical uh, ideas that you can use in your day job. Now we're going to talk about some new challenges. We're going to help you commit to Tableau growth in 2022. So my question to you is, what would you like to achieve this year? What, what thing or things would you look back on this year and feel like it was a resounding success for you in the Tableau space? We'll keep all of our personal goals out of it for today. Um, but my answer to that is whatever it may be, the Tableau community has something available for you. So what you'll see here on this slide is just a number of logos that are all available there. Community sponsored projects or data initiatives that all have slightly different premises but are all geared toward helping people upskill in community. Don't worry, you don't have to screen grab all of this. I'm gonna give you a link to every single one of them. But I want to walk you through a couple that I think may be pretty impactful for you headed into the new year. Um, so the first one I want to highlight, so I'm going to kind of start with some of the beginner focused challenges. Back to Viz Basics is a brand new challenge just kicked off uh, in, in December. Um, this is a, this is the successor to a tool that was built a couple of years back called the Tableau Student Guide. Uh, Eric Balash, who I've highlighted down here at the bottom, has recently taken a project and sort of rebranded as Back to Viz Basics. So here's what this challenge entails, if you think this resonates with you. Um, it focuses on building a specific chart type. So their very first challenge was build your best bar chart. Take whatever data you want, whether it's Superstore or something else, build your most effective bar chart, and then learn from what others have done that you can then roll into your own work. So the audience here for this particular challenge, um, very, very helpful for newbies, um, but also still very good practice for those who've been doing this for a hundred years and maybe just wanna see a couple of different perspectives, right? I think uh, everyone can learn something from this initiative. 
Uh, you'll see here on the right for each of these challenges, I've uh, kind of highlighted the barriers to entry. For this one, very simple. All you need, the Tableau desktop application and any data to go build a bar chart. Uh, fo the focus here is on Tableau desktop. And then the cadence of this uh, initiative is biweekly. So again, you'll get this deck as part of our shared materials. This is the URL for the project. And then you will be able to um, pick up and run with it. You'll get, a, you'll get a chance to work through a lot of different chart types over the course of the year. Um, the next uh, would be Workout Wednesday. So this is not a new initiative. This is an ongoing initiative, but the challenges are new every week. So this get, Workout Wednesday gives you the opportunity uh, to deconstruct a visualization that has already been built and try to recreate it based on a series of requirements and hints. So there's a, always a couple hacks or tricks similar to what you saw from Darrell today that you have to kind of recreate and re-engineer on your own. That's the challenge. Uh, don't worry, solutions are posted each week uh, by the, the crew who runs this challenge. Um, solutions are posted each week, new challenges go up on Wednesday, if you can imagine that. Um, this one generally spans the range from moderate to slightly more challenging, just because they're a little more open-ended. There may be one or two different solutions that'll help you get to the answer. Um, but the challenge generally focuses on newly released features so that you get some experiences with various use cases that you can then take back to work or your, your fun on Tableau Public. Again, this one focuses primarily on upskilling with Tableau Desktop but will absolutely up your game. So uh, make sure if you do this, that you uh, kind of log your participation on the participation tracker so you get credit and you can look back and get at the end of the year and say you did all 52 or whatever, uh, whatever works for you. So that's Workout Wednesday. Uh, another one, we're kind of switching gears here is prep and data. So I'm not sure how many of you are familiar uh, or as intimately familiar with Tableau Prep as you are with Tableau Desktop. But prep and data is geared toward the Tableau prep tool. It's somewhat similar to a workout Wednesday in that you're given inputs and a target output, and you have to figure out that variance. Uh, so this is great practice for those of you who regularly spend time transforming and uh, uh, preparing data for analysis. This is a great way to get involved and learn Tableau prep. Uh, similar to workout Wednesday, it's generally going to be geared toward newly released features, finding ways to incorporate those use cases. And it is also a weekly cadence for this project. Starting to ramp up in difficulty here, Iron Quest. I'm leading into the, bit, the big one uh, around the Iron Biz, but Iron Quest is an, is an initiative run by Sarah Bartlett, who we've had speak to the Charlotte Tug before. She's based out of London. Um, Iron Viz is a big Tableau or an annual Tableau competition where the best of the best compete to go on stage at Tableau Conference and visit out for 20 minutes to be crowned Iron Viz champions. That may sound overwhelming to some of you who are brand new to the community, and it can be. Uh, but Iron Quest was an initiative that was started to help ease that burden of pre preparing to enter something like Iron Viz by offering regular Iron viz esque challenges where you can get feedback, you can practice, you can craft your storytelling, you can hone your presentation and your design and get feedback from folks in the community to help really craft, build your craft there. Um, so this is a monthly cadence, although Sarah holds off around the times that Iron viz feeders and Tableau Conference are happening just because there's actual Iron viz during that season. Uh, but Iron Quest otherwise is a monthly initiative. There are themes, uh, there are you know, data sets that are shared to help get you started. You can also bring your own data. This is an opportunity to maybe flex on both skills, both on Tableau prep, preparing data for analysis, as well as desktop crafting that final product. Um, definitely headed toward the more challenging end of the spectrum, but do not let that scare you off because the only way to get better is to practice. So anyone of any skill level, welcome to take part. Don't be intimidated. If this is something that you're interested in, go for it. 
you'll find a very receptive, helpful community on the other side, willing to help you grow and learn and develop. And then finally, Iron Viz. So spoiler alert, it is Iron Viz season. So we're a little late in the game here. We've got about a little over a week left in the feeder competition. But if this is something you're up for, that's plenty of time to put something together and get entered. Uh, this year's theme is visiting the, visualizing the arts. Uh, there's some sample data sets available. You can craft your own data, but it's pretty open-ended in that you can visualize anything arts related that you see fit. Um, so the competition open through February 7th, go out to the community page for IronViz, understand more about you know, what it takes to enter, uh, what it looks like if, if you're selected. Uh, I've seen this grow from 30, 40, 50 entries per feeder up to hundreds. Hundreds of people enter these feeders and the top three are ultimately selected through the uh, panel of judges to compete at Tableau Conference on stage. Uh, it's a tremendous honor. Uh, last year, the ultimate Iron Biz winner at TC21 was brand new to the Tableau community. So this is why I tell you, don't let it scare you off. She had started using Tableau earlier in the year, decided on a whim to enter Iron Biz, won the, won, or finished in the top three in the feeder, and then presented an absolutely beautiful and compelling uh, design and visualization at Tableau Conference to, to take the crown. Um, so if you're new, throw your hat in the ring. If you're old, if, if you've been around for years, throw your hat in the ring. Uh, if this is something that uh, appeals to you and your sense of uh, competition, go for it. Uh, remember that you don't have to win to have won, right? The experience is valuable in and of itself. So again, this is, this is an annual cadence. It happens once a year, but uh, you know, feel free. We'd love to see the North Carolina Tugs represented on stage at Iron Biz. That would, be, that would be tremendous. And if you happen to enter Iron Biz, even if you don't win, let us know. We'd love to have you give a talk on your design process and what you ultimately built. And we'd love to have you share that at a future tug, uh, one of our North Carolina groups. So that's, that's all of the ways that you can actively get involved. What are some other ways that you can upskill in the Tableau space this year? Like I just said, you can volunteer to speak at your local tug, or you can speak at tugs across the world. We're all still virtual. Why not, right? I know uh, Rashid, who's joined us today, did a world tour at one point, speaking and uh, attending all over the world, even when he did not understand the language of the of, of the various tugs. Um, you don't have to go that crazy. Ideally, you you know you probably want to stick to something you're going to understand. Uh, but feel free to volunteer to speak somewhere. Everybody is looking for content, looking for things to feature that are new and exciting. Um, we asked earlier for folks to highlight their Tableau public. We want you to do that. Uh, we'd love to see your growth in the public space. Please feel free to reach out to us if you need any feedback, assist on that. We'd love to see folks share what they've done. Um, blog, if you're so compelled. Tell people about the things you've developed. If you create some amazing hacks like Brad shared with you earlier, or new techniques that are that you think would be very beneficial for others, bring that into the public sphere. Um, look for ways to engage with the Tableau community on social media. Twitter is a very active and welcoming space uh, for, for Tableau. Uh, engage on meetups. We're going to have some networking time here in a little bit centered around um, there's a breakout time here in a little bit centered around various topics that we've talked about today. Use that to make some contacts, make some friends, meet up with some, or not meet up with some folks, that get connected with some folks on LinkedIn, et cetera. Build some new relationships. Uh, and then, you know, finally, you can, you can engage with internal communities of practice in your workplace or pursue certifications, right? All of these are very valuable ways that you can take this year, be very productive, and come back in 2023 feeling great about the investments you've made. In yourself. Um, all of those uh, community projects I featured on an earlier slide are covered here directly on Tableau's website. So tableau.com slash community slash community projects. All of those are linked up. You can learn more about different ways to get involved and, and what it can mean for you. Um, so that's my challenge to you. What are, what, what are you, what are you going to do this year uh, to uh, fuel your Tableau growth? 
So look, look forward to connecting with you over the course of the year and hearing more about what you've done. That's all I have. Thank you so much, Jeremy. I am personally planning to take your challenge very seriously and complete at least one workout Wednesday and one prep and data this year. I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but I have a lot of other initiatives I participate in too. So for me, that's going to do it. <laughs> All right. Um, so I put my email in the chat box for anyone who wants to get involved with High Country Tug, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm sure that our other co-leaders will share their emails with you as well. We have Piedmont Triad, we have Raleigh Durham, we have Charlotte. And if uh, anybody wants to start a tug or um, get a, a other tug going in South Carolina, we'd love to have you um, participate in our virtual Carolinas in the future. All right, so as Jeremy mentioned, we're going to have a little bit of networking time. Uh, this is completely optional, but we hope that you will stay. Oh yeah, Chris made a good point. Um, Wilmington, Wilmington needs a tug. All right, so we have created four different breakout rooms and we're gonna let you pick which one you're interested in joining. One is gonna be all about maps. One is all about games and other unordinary uses for Tableau. Um, there's one room for a Tableau doctor. So if you have questions, challenges that you need help solving, you can go in that room. And then one room is for community initiatives just to find out more and talk about um, you know, how you'd like to get involved. So I'm gonna open up all those rooms and we're going to um, stop the recording and feel free to go join any of those rooms. Uh, you can jump around, go from one to another. Uh, we'll be meeting for probably about the next half hour. We'll probably wrap it up around 1.15 or so. And we really are glad that you could all join us today. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs>